What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're in Utah and we're here at Tom Woods Custom Drive Shafts. So we lifted the vehicle three inches and that affected the angle at which the drive shaft sits. Now we're gonna go ahead and get a custom drive shaft specifically for this vehicle. We're gonna get measurements. We're gonna talk to Sean and he's gonna explain to us what are some of the benefits in upgrading. Some of you guys might be dealing with vibrations coming from the drive shafts. You guys are gonna wanna stick around. Let's go inside. All right, let's go meet Sean. How's it going, Sean? Good. How's everything, man? Good, how are you? Nice to meet you. Likewise. So I'm Sean Wood from Tom Woods Custom Drive Shafts, and today I'm gonna to show you some of the reasons why people replace their stock Tacoma drive shaft. Sweet, man. Do you need my help? Yeah, if you wanna step around here, I'm gonna have you hold this and pretend you're the carrier bearing. I'll be the carrier bearing. All right, Sean, so I've met with a few people that bought their Tacoma's like, stock, did not lift it, did not add tires, nothing and uh, they would complain that they were getting vibration from the drive shaft. Why do you think that is? Yeah, that, that's a good thing to bring up. So I've talked to people who have the same thing, same problem. So I think that the main thing is because this is so complex, we're really dealing with two different drive shafts, one here and one here. And the engineers at Toyota, they got it right most of the time, but it, they achieved a really delicate balance on, on getting things to operate smoothly and, and work in unison. So sometimes people have problems and it's just kind of bad luck, just right out of the gate but that really gets worse when you lift the truck and you change the angle of this drive shaft. Then everything just gets off. Exactly. So I lifted my uh, Tacoma three inches. What was the effect of that? So the, the biggest thing that that affects is the geometry through which the drive shaft runs. So really the Tacoma drive shaft, you've got essentially two different drive shafts. You have this one uh -huh. and you have this one and they're connected and supported by this carrier bearing. So when you lift the truck three inches, what you're doing is you're changing the angle I'll just show you here, you're changing the angle on the, the lower shaft by basically dropping it further away from the, the carrier bearing. So that All increases right. the angle here and that will often cause drive shaft vibrations out of this drive shaft. Um, one thing that sometimes works, sometimes doesn't, that a lot of people do is they'll put in a, a spacer to drop this carrier so bearing this drops so that'll drop that bit. down. And then sometimes also you use a shim, which is, I've got one here in my pocket. A shim, it's like a basically a wedge. Okay. Um, and you put that shim in, in, in your springs, and what that does is it will kind of rotate your pinion up so it, it kind of fixes the angles there. Sometimes that works, sometimes it just doesn't. And, and I think part of that is just there's a lot of complexity here. And then by dropping this, you're affecting the angle of this drive shaft, and then maybe you fix that vibration, but now you get one out of here. So if somebody goes through all that, they're, they're kind of beating their head against the wall, they just give up and they replace the drive shaft, which maybe is the thing they should have done in the first place. Well, that's crazy, man. There's a lot of components that you're dealing with by just lifting your vehicle. Right, right. Um, a couple other things about these drive shafts is you'll notice, and I've, I've kind of touched on the complexity, there's a lot of moving parts. There's a U-joint here, a U-joint here, there's a center up ball in between these two joints, there's a joint here, a joint here, and then this slip, slip and spline. Um, this, this carrier bearing, you can see this is a little bit loose. Uh, these will often last a real long time, but once you they, they wear out and you have to replace them. The aftermarket carrier bearings are just not as good as the factory ones. Um, the, the universal joints that they use here, they also last a real long time. But once you have to replace them, once they get a little bit worn out, you're lucky to be able to find one. Uh -huh. And if you can find one, it's probably not gonna be very good quality. So one thing that we do different here is instead of using these Toyota style U-joints, is we use like a, a Spicer type 1310 series U-joint. Okay. So this is the most common size U-joint ever made go into any parts store, you can find one. Uh, this one is greasable. We also have them non-greasable non if you prefer. Cool, man. What about the dry shaft itself? Um, you had mentioned something about the quality of this part. Yeah, so, you know, I, I sometimes joke that like Toyota spent their whole drive shaft budget on their joints and didn't leave any left over for the tubing. They use pretty cheap, low quality tubing. It, it's kind of thin, it's soft. Um, that's fine for just driving down the road, but when you really take things off-road, if you hit this thing on a rock and get a dent in it, it's a lot like, you know, a, a beer can. If you're trying to crush it, it's pretty strong, but as soon as you put a dent in the side, it'll just twist right up. So that happens with these tubes. Uh, we use all American-made steel, DOM, drawn-over mandrel tubing. Um, it's a little heavier wall thickness, but a lot better quality steel. 
That's awesome, man. So, uh, what's the next step? Do we have to get some measurements off my truck? Yeah. We're, we're going to make a custom one specifically for my yeah. vehicle, right? And, and, you know, your your truck is kind of standard. It's a lifted Tacoma. You don't have an axle swap, different trans case, anything like that. But we still need measurements. And that's because these, these bolt patterns up here, Toyota used several different bolt patterns. And, and this particular shaft right here, you would think, well, it's the same at both ends. But it's not. This is a different bolt pattern than this one. Okay. On yours, you might have the same at both ends. It might be switched, and it's really just kind of a roll of the dice, which one you got. So we need to measure the length, which we'll show you, and then we're gonna need to measure the bolt pattern on each end. Cool, man, let's go get those measurements. All right. To measure, you're gonna need some things to measure with. Um, I've got a measuring tape. Um, this one is actually helpful because it has metric on one side, and this being a Toyota, it's, it's metric, but inches works too. Um, I have some calipers, if you have these, great. If you don't, you can use a measuring tape. Um, and then you wanna write this stuff down so you're not having to just try and remember. Um, I always like to kinda of draw a map of what I'm measuring, so you know it doesn't have to be perfect, just as long as you understand what it is. And I've got, this would be the transfer case, that would be the pinion, the flanges at each end, that will be the drive shaft length. And then we're gonna be measuring bolt hole spacing. So I'm just drawing a little bolt pattern there, and then we'll fill in what those uh, bolt hole spacings are. So the first thing we're going to measure is going to be the length. It's kind of tough to do unless you're seven feet tall. You can just push it up against the flange at the transfer case. And if you can reach, go all the way down to where this flange mates against the pinion flange. So on this, it's about 69 and a half inches. So this one is where most people have trouble. There's several different bolt patterns. Uh, they're all real similar. Um, they're, they're metric, so it can be kind of tricky if you're using an American measuring tape. But what we're looking for is the bolt hole spacing, and it's going to be side to side and up and down. Sometimes it's a square, sometimes it's a rectangle, but make sure you measure both, and make sure you measure the one at the transfer case and at the axle independently. Um, so this one, we've got, I'm going to use these to start, and I've got these calipers set at metric. So you're just going from, from center of bolt to center of bolt. You kind of have to eyeball that but this is about 66 millimeter. I'm gonna write that down. And then in the other direction, I'll, I'll measure that one with the measuring tape so you can see both ways. And that one's gonna be about two and five eighths, which is uh, same as the 66 millimeter. So this one is a square 66 millimeter bolt pattern. And then I'll go to the other end. Same concept. So I'm gonna be measuring with the uh, metric side of this measuring tape on this one. Um, that one is, looks like about 66 by 66. So in this case, this one is the same at both ends. Not uncommon, but it's also not uncommon for them to be different at each end. This is what we got here. So we've got 66 millimeter by 66 millimeter, which is also roughly two and five eighths by two and five eighths. You can tell us the measurements in, in whichever you prefer. Um, so that's what we've got at the, the transfer case. Same thing at the axle, and then a length flange to flange of 69 and one half inches. So the next step for us is gonna be making the drive shaft. So on this one, we've decided we're gonna do non-greasable universal joints, and that's because they don't need to be greased. Um, one, one important thing to point out about that is that does not mean the drive shaft doesn't need to be greased. This center ball here, this is a really important part. You can see there's a grease fitting there. That's going to be there no matter what. But the U-joints themselves, they don't need to be greased. I'm going to build these parts. Uh, I'm going to start with the slip yoke. Get that one out of the way. This is how we put the joint in. Start with a hammer. Snap rings. So right now, this U-joint, because it's all pushed against that bearing cap, it's real stiff, real tight. But if I give it a little whack right there, that loosens it up and then you have a nice loose joint. So that's done. I'm going to do the double carton. If anyone watching is ever doing this with these non-greasable joints, if you look inside these bearing caps there's a little there's a little plastic kind of washer 
and sometimes when you pull the bearing cap off that washer will stay on there so you want to make sure if, if, if it stays on there, pull it off, put it in there. You don't want to stack them. You don't want to have you know one come off and you put a different cap. On. Installing U joints won't matter if you're just ordering a complete drive shaft because it comes all put together. But if you ever have to replace a joint. That's where it might be helpful. Yeah, if you're doing this at home and you don't have these tools, you can just use a socket. It doesn't matter what size as long as it's smaller than the bearing cap. Um, and then, careful not to hit your fingers, but you can use the socket to seat that cap. So this part is kind of the hard part because we've got little needle bearings inside here. And we've got to get them on this pin. So it takes a little bit of effort to get that lined up right. Alright, so now that these parts are built, we're going to hand these off to Jason. He's one of our builders and he's going to actually build the drive shaft. I come over here to the saw and I, I pick the right diameter of tube off our tube rack here. We go from four inch all the way down to inch and a quarter. So I got the four inch here and then I'm just going to measure it out. So we'll clamp that in there. Bring it over here to our open spindle lathe. Then I'm gonna cruise across the face of it to true it up so it's not wobbly like that. And then we'll put a chamfer on it for the weld. Kind of deeper the inside. And then on the outside we do a, a heavier chamfer so that our weld will hit the insert of the, the component. So we're just going to clean the tube off. One other good thing is it could be dented a little bit from uh, shipping from the tube uh, manufacturer and so when we clean it we kind of watch for little dents and stuff. So what we'll do next is we'll get our spline and then we'll press this. Your spline is going to be this inch and uh, three eighths diameter and uh, the shaft is inch and three eighths diameter and then it's, it's a three and a half inch insert. that pressed in there and I'll set this aside and I'll get your CV or double carton I guess is the proper name so for the Toyota shafts they uh, they come in just the 1310 series uh, u-joints so with the 1310 series the biggest insert that we have available for our CVV weld yoke is a three inch so we got to put a bushing on it so we have these bushings made here so this is just going to take the, the insert diameter from three to three and a half inches we use a flat plate for that then i'll go ahead and weld that just this seam right here basically where the the weld yoke and the the bushing meet
So now we're going to cool that well. Now we're going to do what's called phasing it. We're making sure the alignment of the slip yoke and the weld yoke are the same. Once we put your slip yoke on, the face of the joint on the slip yoke will be the same as the face of this. So now I'm going to dial it in. So then I'm just going to check the field and we just to make sure we're within that ten thousandths of an inch. If it needs to be straightened, then we want to straighten it before we weld one end. We want to go back over the whole thing and make sure it's all still within the tolerances. Okay, so we're all still within our tolerances. We'll go ahead and weld this end over here. Kind of lucked out on this drive shaft. It's, it stayed really straight for us after I welded it. Uh, looks like it, it stayed within tolerances all the way down. So it should be good for a balance, a paint, and uh, an install. When we put our slip yokes on, we want to make sure that any of the, the grease zerks are lined up with that grease zerk so that when you guys are servicing this drive shaft, that um, you can you know if you can see one you can usually see them all and that'll help um with the longevity factor you know so with this particular slip and spline assembly it comes out with uh an inch and a half for compression and as you can see that drive shaft is fully compressed and you have a perfect inch and a half for compression I'm going to turn it up until it starts making a little bit of noise. If I put this in, it'll, it'll give me a reading right here. And it'll tell me basically where it wants the weight. And so, when I stop it, then I'm just moving the weight just a little bit, you know, to try try and get it perfect perfect now that this has got a good balance on it we'll go ahead and weld up the weights um i'm gonna let tyke do that because he's probably a little better at it than me hey my name is tyke i'm about to weld this drive shaft i get to take it out and i'll take the drive shaft over to throw it over here right now after everything's built for the drive shaft we're just cleaning making sure we get all the bad parts off it so it looks nice and fresh with the paint. That's the painting process. Your drive shaft's all painted, greased up, ready to go. Good to do it, man. Thank you. Have a good time. Wow, this thing is heavy. All right, so right now we're at Oakley Off-Road. They were nice enough to lend us their lift. Now we're going to be installing the dry shaft. All right guys, now it's time to install our Tom Woods drive shaft. What you're gonna need is a 14 millimeter socket and a 14 millimeter wrench. We're gonna go ahead and start from the back. Now we're gonna make our way to the front, closer towards the transfer case. You guys are going to need a 17 millimeter wrench for the bolt that is closest towards the transfer case and the bolt that is facing the axle, you're going to still use your 14 millimeter. All right, so this is kind of stuck in here right now. I'm just going to use a dead blow hammer to kind of get it loose. 
Right now it's good enough to where we can remove the carrier bearing and the whole drive shaft will come out. You got it? Yep. And the drive shaft should come right out. Now it's time to install the new Tom Woods custom made drive shaft. All right. All right, so now it's time to move up to the front. As you guys can see, there's no longer a carrier bearing here. This drive shaft is just one solid piece. So what we're doing right now is Riley's holding up the drive shaft so it doesn't move, and I'm just gonna tighten it. All right. Solid. Looks like we're good to go. All right guys, that about wraps it up for this video. If you guys like this video, make sure to hit the like button. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure to do so. Also, we're offering 5% off Tom Woods drive shaft. Make sure to check the descriptions down below for all the information. See you guys in the next video.